touching you. I'm not touching you. See you there. Hi, my name is Sam Orr, and today we're going to learn a little bit about calculus. Follow me. Hi, and welcome to Calculus on Couches. Today we're going to learn a little bit about limits and discontinuities. But first, you may ask yourself, what is a limit? Is this a limit? Why? This better not be a limit. Is this a limit? <laughs> Is this a limit? Is this a limit? You're so cute. Is this a limit? Shh. Actually, those are all good guesses, but none of them are right. This is what a limit actually looks like. Mr. Orant, this is just a simple y equals x squared graph. And it is, because you see, limits are everywhere on a graph. It's what a function wants to be at a certain point, like these young middle school students. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a ditch digger. Now, there are actually three types of limits. There's left-hand limits, right-hand limits, and overall limits. Now, to show an example of this, let's use our old friend the equation y equals x squared. To show a left-hand limit, we come from the left-hand side of the equation. And at the point x equals 2, it wants to be y equals 4. And it's the truth for the other way coming from the right-hand side, or the right-hand limit. As it approaches x equals 2, it wants to be y equals 4. Now, because both the left and the right-hand limits are the same, that means the overall limit at the point x equals 2 is 4. Now, not in every case will the limit from the left and the right-hand side be the same at a certain point. For example, on this step function at the point x equals 1, from the left-hand side, the left-hand limit wants to equal 1. However, from the right side, or the right hand, it wants to equal 2. Now, remembering our definition of a limit, the left-hand and the right-hand side must equal the same. So, coming from the left-hand side, it wants to equal 1, and coming from the right-hand side, it wants to equal 2. Now, these are not the same, so there is no limit at the point x equals 1. Now, this is the standard notation you'll see when you're asked to find the limit, for example, in a worksheet or in your book. It can either be expressed as a big L or as this, where f of x is the function you want to find the limit in, and the point c is the point at which you want to find the limit on this particular one. Now, for this one, it's just an overall limit, but if it asks you to find the left-hand limit, there will be a little minus sign right there. And if it wants you to find the right-hand limit, it will instead be a plus. Now, in addition to just finding limits, there's various things we can do with them. For example, if we have two functions together and we want to find the limit of these two functions combined, there's six different rules we can do to find this. The first one, the sum rule, allows us to add the two functions' limits together to find the new function's limit. The difference rule does the same thing, however it works with subtraction. The product rule allows us to multiply the two functions' limits together, while the quotient rule allows us to divide the two limits. The constant multiple rule says that if there's a constant being multiplied to the function, we can just take that constant and multiply it to the limit of that function to find the new limit. And the power rule allows us to take, if a function is being raised to a power, we can just take that limit and raise it to the same power, and it will be the new limit. Using all these, we can find the new limits of pretty much any function we can imagine. Now, I haven't gotten too far in depth with these. However, you will in class. So you can find them all in your book. So take the time to review and study these and commit them to memory. Now, related to the field of limits is continuity. And essentially, what continuity asks is, is it a solid line throughout the entire function? If it has any holes or jumps or gaps anywhere in the function, it's considered to be discontinuous. And the way we can check to see if a function is continuous or not is if we can find the limit at, any, at all the points on the domain that we pick. So if some functions are continuous for their entire domain, we can find a limit anywhere on it. 
while others are only continuous for a small portion of their domain. Now to tell if there's a discontinuity, there's four particular types that we use. The first type, a point, is where there's essentially just a hole missing in the graph, as you can see at x equals 2. If you move on, we have a jump graph, which is where a function randomly jumps up to another spot, leaving a large gap vertically between the two points. The third type, oscillating, you will almost never see. In fact, this is probably the only time you will ever see an oscillating discontinuity. But essentially, it oscillates and it never actually reaches a number. Now the final type is interesting, it's an infinite discontinuity, and it occurs at any point there's an asymptote. Now an asymptote, for those of you who don't remember, is a point where it just gets close, but never exactly there. For example, in our metaphor earlier, all those kids who wanted to be something, chances are they'll get it. But asymptote is someone who wants something really bad, but probably never will get it. I want to be a fire truck. I want to be a fireman. So remember, don't give up on your dreams, ever. But also, asymptotes are what something wants to be, but as it gets infinitely closer, it never quite reaches. So just remember, asymptotes, really close, never quite will be. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've explored a lot today. We've learned about limits and discontinuities. Here are just a few guidelines to help you out before we go. Number one, there's only a limit at a point if the left and the right hand side equal each other at that particular point. In addition, to decide if a graph is continuous, an easy way to do it is if you can take your pencil and trace the graph and you don't run into any jumps or gaps or holes or space nebulas, it's continuous and you'll be fine. A couple little reminders. So remember everyone, we talked a lot about stuff today. Calculus, limits, discontinuities, all sorts of fun calculus related stuff. The number one thing to remember is, calculus isn't all fun and games. Some of it is back-breaking labor. Heck, on the derivative section alone, we had four injuries. <sighs> I'm Sam Warren, and remember, always wear deodorant while doing calculus, because calc teachers can smell fear. <laughs>